everyone. I'm so excited to welcome our next guest to Wise Wednesday's podcast. Um, it is Mars Bravo, and she is the owner of Signs from Mars. Hello. She is Hi. joining us from Los Angeles, correct? Yes. So technically Culver City, but I do cover a large area of Los Angeles. So, And um, I always like to chat, especially locationally, because it's cool that I get to talk to so many people all over the country. Um, what's the weather like right now there in Los Angeles? I'm in Midwest. We're about 50, kind of sunny. What's going on out there? Well, we always have the best weather here. I know you guys know that. So it's a perfect day, like every single day. We got sunny blue skies and it just feels great. <laughs> Nothing to complain about there. I know you guys do. I have am bragging. Best. I am bragging. <laughs> just a little bit. I can down. I can down. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on our uh, podcast today and sharing some of your information and how you got started in the business. Um, but before we dive into signs, tell me about yourself outside of signs, hobbies, things you love to do. Share some of that insight. So my name is Mars and I am 33 years old now and um, outside of signs, I like to ride my motorcycle with friends and you know, I've been asked this question before years ago and I used to be like, oh, I love hanging out, you know, go to concerts and stuff like that. But now that I'm in my 30s, I don't think I enjoy that as much. I do actually have a new uh joy for hanging out with my family so i like to spend time with my parents and just close friends um and then just do more calm things just to go to a bookstore drink coffee things like that but i think like the most like risky thing i like to do is the motorcycle riding right now yeah definitely that's pretty adventurous i love watching people ride motorcycles but it scares me a little bit too <laughs> It is, it is um, a scary thing to do, but my advice is if you're scared, don't do it. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. You have to be able to like uh, compensate for what other drivers are doing around you. So if fear gets the best out of you and that's the kind of person you are, then maybe just try something else. Yeah, I'll just stick to doors and cars. <laughs> So tell me a little bit about um, how long you've been in business and um, just your kind of team in general, what you rely on um, as regarding the signage company or the business. Yeah, so I'm coming up to eight years in the sign industry. I have a um, design background, however, and that's kind of how I got started. Um, right now, I do a lot of uh, the vinyl work myself and some of the installations as well. And then I have a small group of four people that I depend on for fabrication and bigger installations as well. So yeah, that's, that's where I'm at right now um, since I started my own company not too long ago. But before that, I was working for other sign companies where I was able to basically acquire all the information that I know now and grow as a sign maker and essentially become one. Mm -hmm. And how did you actually get started in the um, signage industry? A lot of people don't know when I decide to reach out to certain guests or guests reach out to me, I like to have conversations and you and I were talking about like a lot of your design background and just how your, um, I think it was your mom fostered that creative side. So what, what, um, how did you end up in signs and, um, what was you kind of focusing on until opening signs from Mars? Yeah, so um, at a very young age, I've always shown signs of just uh, artistic inclination. So uh, I come from a Mexican family, and they're not very artistically inclined, so to speak. But my mom did see that at a very young age in me, so she did um, promote it and encourage it, which I'm always really grateful for that. Um, and so my whole life, I've been in the like play music, making art, stuff like that. And when I needed to get a little bit more serious, I guess, uh, going to college, I thought I wanted to do graphic design uh, because it looked fun in school. 
And so then I come to find out that in the real world, it's not at all what it was for me when I was in school with my friends, like putting in 16 hours in the studio, doing still screen printing, um, just being creative and having fun and uh, probably drinking too much monsters. And so uh, I got a very good job uh, out of school for, for a uh, graphic design position and it was really well paid and I was really proud of myself. And then I come to find out, you know, a few months into the job, I was miserable. I was like, oh no, this is not what I thought it was going to be. I not happy here. Um, so being the person that I am, I quit and everyone was like, are you out of your mind? How are you? What do you mean you quit? You don't even have anything lined up. What are you going to do? I'm like, I don't know. Something will come up. And then little did I know that nothing was going to come up. There was like some sort of like economical depression going on and there was no jobs. And I was like, yeah, so I was wrong. And I applied to so many positions. Like at this point, it was just random. Anything that said design in the title, I was just applying for. And then I would start getting calls and I didn't know even who was calling at that point because I had applied to so many places. And so someone's like, oh yeah, we need you. Can you draw? And I'm like, yeah, I can draw, I can sketch. Okay, we need you to come in and help us out with some site survey. And I was like, I have no idea what that is, but I'm gonna go find out. And so I go to this place and uh, it was kind of like sketchy. It looked like a warehouse and looked like they made me go through like this alley to the back. And I was like, oh man, where, where am I? This is not looking good. And I go the park in the back and at the time, like, I didn't know what a bucket truck was, but there was like a bunch of them and they were all wrapped with the company logo. And, and then they opened this gate and I walk in, it's a, it's a sign company. I've never thought about signs before. I've never heard about signs before. I didn't even think like, oh yeah, someone makes signs. Mm -hmm. And immediately I fell in love. I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. And just like the environment, the designers, the fabricators, the smell of the paint, the smell of, you know, welding and like, you know, you know what I mean? So it's just like, this is it. And the sales and the phones ringing and everything. I'm like, this is exciting. Uh, so yeah, that's when I had like this kind of position to like go on site and basically perform site service, just measure places and draw them out, sketch them out, take photos of it and bring them back uh, for the designers to render the signs onto. Uh, and yeah, that didn't last very long. Uh, so then because I knew in that moment that that's what I wanted to do, that's when I was like, okay, well now, now I know what I want to do. So I'm just going to focus on finding a company that I can work for. So I found another sign company after that. And so that's kind of how my um, career began. And and every single time I would get a job, I would just take it It all, take everything in, just what I can learn, the most I can learn, uh, you know, the best version of myself that I can be. And so I constantly felt like I was growing, like as an artist, as a sign maker. And until I, so I finally like, you know, I could with confidence say that I am one, right? Because before when you don't really know anything, you're like, and I, I don't know anything. Like I would answer the phone, scared for my life that it would ask me something that I didn't know. Like, do you guys have blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, what the heck is that? And just like, look it up or like ask somebody like, you know? And so now I'm like, my confidence is there. Cause like, I learned so much. Uh, and so that led me to work for the last company that I worked for. I was there for about five years and, uh, everything was going great. I loved it. Um, and I was extremely comfortable and I really, uh, just, I think that was the, the most, um, uh, that I was the, the place that I was able to take in the most. And, um, uh, yeah, unfortunately that also came to an end uh, at the time. It was a sad moment for me, you know, cause I had made such great friends and gone through so much with this company. And I really thought I would be there to grow and like see the company grow and, you know, myself as well. Uh, but I believe God had different plans for me. And so I took another leap of faith <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to start my own thing then, you know, and 
just like everyone's like, what are you talking about? How are you going to make money? Like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what's the worst thing that can happen? I've done this plenty of times before where I just go ahead and just jump into something and, you know, hope for the best. <laughs> and so that's how I actually started Signs from Mars. And uh, I was like, I started off so good. <laughs> I was like killing it. I'm like, why did I wait so long to do this? I'm doing so great. I'm getting all these awesome jobs and I'm having fun doing my own creative things with it. And like uh, the way that I market it and the type of projects that I'm getting. And then I'm like, you see, like what's the worst thing that can happen? And uh, so that was like late December, 2019. And then I was killing it January and February and then March. Uh, my birthday's in March, so I'm like, I'm going to celebrate big, and I'm doing so great. And then I see it as, like, worldwide pandemic. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe that's the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> but um, thankfully, it didn't affect me um, during that time, uh, especially for being a small company and not having such a big overhead yet and things like that, it worked to my advantage. And I had a lot of work the entire time. And so um, I'm grateful for that, but it also was uh, yeah, a little bit of luck in there for me, I think, uh, just the way things played out. Absolutely, and I think that um, it's interesting the positivity that you talk about as far as you know when the pandemic hit you know, with you being smaller, you were really still able to focus in on your clients' needs and not have to be worried about, you know, the rest of the staff or feeding other people. So, you know, it's it's um it's a blessing that it happened. Like you said, even even though you would have probably surpassed your goals had the pandemic not happened, it was just kind of a small yeah. wake up call, you know, for all of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I do feel for other bigger companies, right, that they did struggle and whatever else happened. Uh, but I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't imagine what I would have done in that in that position. But I'm actually really glad that it happened the way that it did. Um, and now I'm still, you know, things are looking good. Still things are progressing. And, you know, I see progress every day. So as long as that, that's consistent, I'm not really concerned about the speed of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, when you talk about taking that leap of faith towards the end, when you were with the last sign company, um, a lot of the listeners and different just women that work for sign companies, you know, they love the sign companies that they work for, and they really do appreciate all of the knowledge that people pour into them, but they want that next level of ownership and um, creative control, I guess you could say, on the direction of which they want to go. Um, what what do you think you were most afraid of before making that leap um, into your own ownership? So my fear didn't come till afterwards. <laughs> it was kind <laughs> of like an aftershock. <laughs> um, as I think it was mostly because I was like uh, sort of forced to do it in a way because, you know, I did mention that I was comfortable. And I think comfort is great. Like we all strive to be comfortable in life, have a good home and a well-working car and things like that. Uh, but the comfort that I'm referring to, it's like the one that sort of just makes you lazy or like it pushes you back from your potential, right? And in the back of your head, you know you can do more you can do, or you know you can do better or you know you you can apply yourself to learn a new skill or sharpen one that you already have, but you don't do it because you're comfortable. And so um, I think that's sort of in the pocket where I was in, right? And the way that things played out with the last company um, not working out after so many years, I was kind of forced to. It was either quit and go work for another company or quit and start my own company. Those are really the only two choices I had. And so then that's when I thought to myself, if I quit and go work for another company, 
one of the things that I was experiencing was that eventually my growth as a designer and as a sign maker was being capped. And um, so then I, I asked myself, if I go to another place, sure, I'm gonna grow a little bit more, but it's gonna come to a time when that's gonna happen again. And so do I want to just keep moving around places until, you know, there's no cap on how much I can do or how crazy I can dream about building something. And so that's when I said, you know, I think uh, the cards are aligning more and in me just having my own project. And like you said, having more of the control over it and what I want to do with it. And so then, um, I didn't, I wasn't freaking out yet because I was excited and I was making my website and I was like, this, I actually, even the name, I was like, that's perfect. Like the name for the company is perfect. Everything was working out. And so it wasn't until later that I was like, oh no, what did I do? And I started to feel all this doubt and all this fear of like, I, are people gonna, you know, believe what I'm saying or are they gonna take me seriously or am I gonna be able to get enough projects for the month to, you know, like have enough. And it just, it kind of set in later on. And I think they were very, just almost like generic feelings, you know, like that we, I think we've all experienced, right? Like you start doubting yourself about silly things and then you start projecting that, like, am I knowledgeable enough? Can I actually pull this off? Even though you've done it a thousand times before. But because now you're like the one who's exposed and you can't hide behind a company name, uh, then it becomes sort of a different feeling. But uh, yeah, I think I've done, I think it it passed by. I think I've done a great deal too. I didn't have to prove it to anybody else. I had to prove it to myself first. And I think uh, I did that. Absolutely, yeah, I think a lot of, um... Um, people in general, I don't think that's just subject to women. I think we, as you mentioned, get in our heads with our own lack of ability and it isn't our lack of ability. Maybe it might be a little bit of lack of knowledge that we have to educate ourselves, but most of the time we beat ourselves up more than anyone else outside ever could. And, you know, and it is one of those things that I think that um, team members sometimes can look at business owners and you can maybe elaborate on this and think, oh, I can do it better. Do you think though now you being an owner, do you see how that is a flawed way of thinking because a lot of team members don't understand everything that goes into being a business owner? Or, I mean, because we all joke and say not everyone can own. We all have to have team members and people we can rely on. Um, but do you think that sometimes looking in as ownership do you see it differently now that you're still somewhat freshly new into ownership as opposed to working for someone else, that there's things that maybe you were just like, wow, I didn't even know I had to be concerned with this. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question, Wendy. Uh, I think for the most part, like when somebody says like, oh, I can do that better. Like if it's coming from a genuine place, then if you believe it, then yeah, by all means, go and do it better. Like, you know, I believe that what I do, somebody absolutely 100% can do better than I do it. Uh, but if it's coming from a place of like, you just seeing it from the outside perspective, and then you think you can do it just because we make it look easy. <laughs> it's like, there's a difference, right? Because it's like, okay, then try and then you realize, like you said, there's so much behind the door that it takes to, to run a company or to, to manage multiple people and to make sure that at everything plays its part, especially sign making, right? You have to do the sales, you have to get the project approved, and then you have to design it, and then you have to fabricate it, and then you have to uh, schedule the installation, and then you got to make sure that it's, you know, permitted or whatever requirements and then the client's happy. So it's like so much that goes on for just one project. So if one person only has one role, then it might appear like, yeah, it's easy. I can do all that. Um, has it changed my perspective from when I was an employee till now? Not, not so much in the sense of um, thinking that I, couldn't do it, but I think definitely the stress is 
different, like for me, uh, just it's a different type of stress that now literally runs in my head all day long. Whereas before, you know, I can tap out of that. I was like maybe stressed out about a project being late or something and then having to like buy time for the company. But then I could go home and disconnect and just be like, all right, tomorrow's a new day. And now it's like, yeah, I can go home, but I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, and then you'll be like, you know, trying to like decompress or like get in the gym or watch TV. And then something comes to you, I'm like, oh my God, I have to do this one thing. And then you write it down because like your brain's always going. So I think that's, that's like one of the things that people may not realize is like, it's so much going on in your head that you always have to be sort of thinking about it, you know, even if you don't want to. Absolutely. You don't get that opportunity to just disconnect from it. You're correct. And I always try to do a fair, um, each side of the coin, I guess you could say, because I get a chance to talk to a lot of owners. And I do try to also equal that out with a lot of uh, team members, because it is one of those things that, you know, it is great to be an owner and be able to somewhat, you know, call your own shots and your own destiny. But like you say, you're also not having to always be on when you're a team member. And so it is a very interesting um, being able to show both sides of that coin to our listeners and just letting them know, like you said, don't don't beat yourself up with self-doubt because if you feel like that's a great strength, go for it and try to make it happen. Hey, you could always go work for a signed person if it doesn't work out, right? Yeah. <laughs> but just be, in, <laughs> just be in reality that you have to have the passion before mm -hmm. you make the jump. Yeah, absolutely. And I do hope that I'm able to build a team of people who are better than me, by all means. I want that 100%. <laughs> so uh, it's going to just be awesome, you know, when I'm able to do that and just everybody is better than me at what they're doing. And that's my goal, really, you know, it's, it's just building an actual team that uh, believes in some somewhat of a greater cause, right? And it's not just about you. Um, and so I think signs impact the community in such a big way. And so, um, you know, I, from my experience in working in other sign companies, I don't think that way, you know, it's a lot, it's very business driven. Sure. There's a lot of money in the sign industry, but I think there's also, uh, beautiful art form. And I also think that it's a great way for our community to look its best and then to just be able to make everybody else feel good about having their business also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a great segue into what I was going to talk about next, because I know that you are very passionate about having beautiful signs. And that was one of the things that we talked about is, you know, some clients just don't get it, right? You know, they want the basic, they, you know, they may not have the budget, you know, there's a whole reason why yeah. signs end up the way that they are. And I know you said that um, for your focus, that's something that you really want to hone in on is trying to bring the most creatively beautiful signs that um, when given the opportunity. So what does that look like um, when you meet with a client? You know, how do you drive that bus as far as that vision or do are you finding that because of how you're promoting yourself, you're getting those clients uh, because I wish I made more beautiful signs, but I feel like I just yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it's a little bit of both. I do uh, believe that uh, as designers, you know, we sometimes people don't think, uh, um, how do I phrase this? Some, sometimes people don't think designers are uh, the same uh as any other like crazy professional, like a doctor, for example, like a surgeon or somebody, right? You go to the hospital and you need surgery. You're not going to go lay in bed and be like, hey, cut me this way and open me up that way and take it out this way, right? The doctor knows what they're doing and they're going to do it the best to their knowledge so that everything works out and you don't die. 
So I feel like the same way for us is like when you become a great designer, uh, you have to have that trust in, you know, that person to know best because we put in the time to study, you know, what it, what makes a design successful and why it's not just like, oh, it looks great. Or that's a great color. Like, you know, there's so much to it, like anywhere from the type of font that you pick to the size, to the color, to the way that it's lit up everything has its like importance in playing a full role. Right. And so I feel like some clients maybe don't realize that. And so part of my job is to teach that to people, to let them know, Hey, you need to trust me, you know, because this is what's going to increase your sales, or this is what's going to get people's attention to come into your store, or this is what's going to look great on that photo opportunity for your event. And so I do try to be the one driving the bus, like you said. Um, and so with doing that, uh, I'm able to promote myself in a way where I um, want to have more of a niche of a client. So that way it doesn't become this sort of burnout for me to like try to convince the wrong people about what I'm doing uh, as opposed to just getting the right client that I'm looking for. And so somebody who's open to creativity and someone who's open to, you know, doing things a little bit different than the norm. And, um, and so, yeah, I do promote myself that way. And, and I do make the, the signs just like a little bit more edgy in a way, like where they just kind of stand out a little bit more uh, than what you would see, like, at, you know, any kind of normal place. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great um, illustration um, of what you were talking about with the doctor. You know, I, I've only been in the sign industry for eight years. My husband is the one with the commercial signage background and I was in healthcare before. And like you said, everyone trusts people in healthcare. They think every, I mean, you could be the lowest of the lowest person in a hospital <laughs> and they still think you know everything. Um, it's but something about that uniform. <laughs> it is. We need a sign uniform, apparently. I know. Um, but do you think the fact, you, I mean, when you were speaking on it, it I was really thinking, um, you know, we were blessed when we purchased our franchise that uh, one of our first hire was a sign designer, and he actually had extensive sign design, but he had also been worn down and jaded by years of the sign industry of just that client. So do you think that's because a lot of the designers either come into the industry not knowing signs and don't really know how to balance, like you said, the marketing side and the creative side and what's going to be approved and how you can make it? Do you think it's because there's not that real training per se that it's like you just kind of learn design and then they just kind of go say go get a job you're a designer now because i think all designers have very unique niches you know sign mm -hmm. design is different than you know print design and all of that yeah. so do you think it's yeah. kind of the the training that goes into why we see i don't want to say ugly signs but you know the the level of sign creativity not, that we see not cute <laughs> Correct, not cute. Yeah. <laughs> no, I do agree with you, Wendy. I, I actually do think it's because of the training. Um, and then, like myself, I was a graphic designer, you know, and when I went into the sign industry, basically what I knew, I almost had to throw everything out of the door and learn how to become a sign designer. Yes, having a design background helps a lot, you know, to have you know, able to, to know software, it's like, you know, like uh, Adobe Illustrator, things like that, or to be able to know uh, how to vectorize things, uh, you know, things like that are basic uh, as a designer, Th those are extremely helpful to have. But I do think that becoming a sign designer is a completely different uh, side of things that we don't have the proper training, at least not from that I'm aware of for the sign industry. I feel like a lot of people just stumble upon the job and they bring in what they know from school or from other sign company, I mean, uh, design firms into a sign company and they 
it's not, it doesn't translate the same way. And then because they haven't been properly trained, they don't know how to communicate that with the client or with the fabricator. Um, and so I do think there's a little bit of a, a problem there, you know, and I, I hope that I'm able to like when, you know, when I start building my team, I'm hope, able to consider all those things that I found a flaw in the sign industry. And it sucks because I think if you don't already, if you're not already like born into the sign industry, like your uh, dad uh, had a sign company or your grandfather or whatever, and it was passed on and you kind of learn that way. If you just kind of stumble in like I did, like from like some sketchy alley, uh, <laughs> you know, like you're just like, what, how do I do this? What do I do? There's no like actual like academy or, or any type of like trade school that really teaches you this awesome, you know, industry. And so I think it's important that we, you know, we bring that back, especially as women. I think there's a lot of women out there that would love to do what we do and they just don't know about it or they just don't know how to get started. Absolutely. And, and that is one of the things I found very interesting. Like I said, being so new, I was like, wow, you know, it's like a whole, I mean, there's so many, um, skill sets under one building, depending upon the level at which a sign company, you know, is. And it's just amazing that, like you said, it is not any form of a trade that you can actually go and physically learn. And I think that it mm -hmm. also is contributing to a lot of like shortages, especially like in the manufacturing side. I know us, mm -hmm. we've been struggling almost since conception to ever mm -hmm. really get to our full capacity because we can't find people that know how to manufacture signs, which is different than mm -hmm. a lot of other things. So like you said, it is a gap in um the workforce that hopefully together we can all tackle and it can get stronger and mm -hmm. we need more you know people and businesses and we can all grow because there's definitely the work there we just need the training exactly yeah i agree with you so when someone comes to say uh, that you kind of drive the creative bus for the um, the creative freedom for like a new business does that usually look like from brand conception or do usually they come to you with some type of um branding already that you then kind of take from there to try to beautify their sign i have had both uh i have had people that need to start from scratch like even from logo design um, and then, um, most people though, already have some sort of branding established or some sort of idea on what they want to do. Uh, and so I guide them from there on. Um, I do sometimes get some clients, like I said, that don't have anything that they need a logo and all of these things, but, um, I don't take too much on that, um, that part of it, because it's, it is a, like we were talking about before, like design is not just, you can do everything. Like my parents think, oh, you're a designer, make me sure, make me a business card. It's like, yeah, I can make it, but it's not my thing, you know? Right. And, um, I feel like with branding, it's so important in it, but it's so like hefty. Like there's a lot to do with branding a company, especially if, to make it a successful one. So I don't go too much in that route. I've helped people before sort of, you know, get some simple signs and just a simple logo or just something, uh, if they're, you know, just needing it, but I don't go too much in depth with that. Uh, most of my clients already have an idea on what they want. Um, and, uh, sort of their vision. And then I just help them. I just help guide them to, to make that vision come to life or even make it better, um, by showing them other possibilities on how to make their project. And, um, I know that you are a, um, like a contributing writer for signs of the times, correct? Yes, I actually have a column due today. Oh, nice. <laughs> but uh, <I've>... deadline. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. Right. Podcast cut off. 
And tell us about that. What do you like about um, helping as a contributing writer for them? I am so grateful for that opportunity. I can't uh, express that enough because when I came into the sign industry knowing nothing, I used to use Science of the Times as almost like a Bible to learn things. To tell you that I would even look at the uh, advertisement. Mm -hmm. So like whatever machine that we're selling, I'd be like, what's that? What does it do? Why does it cost as much? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, what do you need to run it? And have like, da -da 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 -da. And so um, now to be on the other side of that, to be able to contribute, to um, share my stories, to hopefully encourage and hopefully uh, have other people learn from from my experiences or even my mistakes, which I'm very open about. Uh, and so it's fun. It's been really fun. And I honestly, it still doesn't feel real to me sometimes that I can open a magazine and see myself there and see the words that I wrote because I used to be the person reading it and learning right. from it. And it's, it's just so cool. Absolutely. Yes, I do. I see your name pop up in the uh, magazine <laughs> often. So yes, I know that you're able to make your mark in that way as well. Um, where do you see the future of signs from Mars and just women in the industry in general? I have big dreams, Wendy. I have big, big dreams for signs from Mars and for the sign industry. I do think that one of my callings is to essentially save the sign industry, you know, by contributing to uh, the teachings of it. So to sort of reach out to people that would want to do this and to give them the proper training. So even maybe uh, making part of my company some sort of academy, you know, where I can have some sort of schooling that people can take and then however they feel at the end of that uh, have the the possibility to work for my company then so it'd be a great way to not only provide the education but also know that the people who do love it and they see themselves doing this for a living have the opportunity to to work for science from mars uh, with the proper training so that's like something that's in my head and I really see it. I see it so clearly. So it's just, it's just going to take time. Big dreams take time. But um, yeah, that's kind of where my head is. And I just, I think um, because a lot of the people that are in the sign industry since like the 60s and stuff, they're, you know, they're not passing along their knowledge. I think what you do is actually awesome, you know, to reach out to people and women who are in the industry and that they are game changers. And so I think yeah, that's amazing. And um, that's really the only way to keep this going and to make it better is by being open and sharing our experiences to, with one another and to really make it look as fun as it actually is, you know? Because every time I tell people I'm a sign maker, they're like, <laughs> I didn't know somebody made signs. It's like, yeah, look around. How many signs do you see right now? And they're like, that's a sign, that's a sign. I'm like, someone's making that. And they're like, I never thought about that. You know, it's like we're not really in the in the you know front of people's minds. So I hope we can change that by you know, making sign making cool again. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. And I recently just did a podcast with um, Adrienne Palmer, um, the editor at Big Picture Magazine. And she said that her goal is to eventually, there won't have to be women in signs awards because there will be so many women with the men up to win awards that we won't have to have our own categories um, because it will become such a norm of seeing just amazing women you know in different leadership roles across all of the sign industry and i just thought that that's wonderful because you know a lot of times we think oh we just have to keep awards forever and you just award award but to a certain degree the awards are there now because the women just aren't being recognized and so it is really wonderful to think that hopefully one day everybody you'll see with a, a gentleman would also be a great leader um with the ladies as well absolutely and i think women 
brings such a different dynamic to a sign shop that uh, just a group of men don't. I mean, obviously you need both, it's a balance. Um, and I think more sign companies are gonna start to realize that, uh, you know, that women do bring a lot to the table that actually makes the industry better and also increase sales as well. Absolutely. And, um, and then this is just a closing question, but I'm just enamored by your video. Like, I oh, love you. your marketing <laughs> videos. Um, I was actually watching one on, I believe it was LinkedIn, maybe yesterday uh -huh. or last week, the, the lady and the men's restroom. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you remember which one? And I just thought it was interesting. So where do you get your, um, you know, is that kind of a part of just what you see in general, your marketing for your company is the time it spends to obviously make a sign for a client, but are you also thinking about how you're going to market it and show it to other people, you know, during that process, because you're very creative in that. And that's one of the things that um, I will say personally, I struggle with because as, um, as much as I love some of the signs we make, I'm like, it's hard creatively to like show their them off. And so I was just like, yeah, at how you do some of that. It's very, very creative. Yeah, absolutely. There's very much a lot of intention behind those videos from the beginning. When I started to do uh, my own company, Science for Mars, I um, had this vision to to make it almost you know, like, well, cool, but interesting so that people can get to see a little bit of the process of whether it's like the fabrication or the installation or whatever process of the site making and like a small uh, clip where it's not like it's not boring. It didn't drag on forever where you just lost full like attention. But in a way, we're like, oh, that, that's how you do it. That's cool. Or like just sort of grab people's attention in that way. And I think um, those videos also do a great, uh, uh, it's a great way to honor that business as well, to show their sign just looking great in their lobby or in this um, video you're talking about in their restroom because it was a neon sign, right? Uh, yes. Right on top of the, yeah. So, and this uh, particular place, it's a like photography studio. So they're very creative people coming in there all the time. And so, you know, I wanted to, capture that feeling. Um, so I do um, do that intentionally. I try to make the videos as cool as possible. And um, with all the background that I have, uh, as far as like, uh, you know, music, and then uh, I've done some like assisting jobs for like, you know, movie making and still screen printing. And so I have a lot of background like the art. And so I'm finally able to sort of bring them all together uh, into the sign making. And so it's part of that. I mean, I do make, um, uh, I do film and I do photograph the sign mm -hmm. and with the intention of making sure that it looks its best and not only to honor that client, but also to promote it for everybody else to see how, how something can come from nothing to something so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so I do plan to make that a thing, uh, to have, part of the company uh, have like a dedicated marketing department where I just have people editing videos and filming and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, you do a really great job and there's so many people across our industry that just do a wonderful creative job in showcasing their work and I just love it. And that's a big part of, you know, I think that's also why a lot of sign people follow other sign people. It isn't necessarily, you know, for anything else, but to kind of almost be, wow, you know, oh, the, wow, they did that. Wow, they marketed it. You know, I just, I think it was really cool. And I, I think I literally just watched it like a day or two yesterday. So I knew I was going to have to have that question answered. <laughs> Yeah. So I do thank you so much for joining us on the podcast and just sharing about your journey. And um, thank you for you know, having me. Absolutely. And I know it wasn't easy, you know, starting right before a pandemic, but here we are, you know, on the here other we, side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, you're, you're like on the other side of the literally, country right now. Right. And um, 
one of the things that we love most besides obviously talking about signs and everything else um, is what we call our rapid fire questions. And so I told Marge that I had a couple of um, questions picked out for her, but one thing that I just had to know about was how creative her name was. So not too many people do me named Mars Bravo. So Mars, tell us a little bit about your name for the rapid fire questions, because I think it's a wonderful, um, unique name. Yes, I I did get lucky with the stage name. I'm not going to yeah. shy away from that. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I was much younger, I, I used to be in an all-girl punk rock band. Uh, and so I used to be, I used to play guitar for the band and also like what they would call the screamer. So <laughs> you have the singer and then you have the other person that just basically screams in the background. And so I would do that, like, you know, so punk rock and, you know, being on stage, the lights, playing, sweating, people in the mosh pit, I, I would get extremely red, like my veins and my neck would pop up and my face was red. So a friend of mine started calling me Mars. And I was like, hey, that's cool. I'm going to keep that. And so I just was like, all right, Mars and Bravo is my last name. So I'm like, that's perfect. And so yeah, that's kind of how that was born. And then um, so for the name of the company signs from Mars, I was trying to be kind of like funny with it or not funny, but just sort of like, I don't know, like some sort of pun. Right. And so signs from Mars, like there, I was thinking like, maybe people are going to say like, oh, it's like from a different planet, like, or something out of this world type of thing. Right. And then they meet me and they're like, oh wait, you're Mars. And so it's like signs from you. And it's like, that's kind of how that played out and it worked out perfectly just like yours uh wise you know women in science etc right that's genius <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> yeah, yeah that's genius like yeah that's right on the money so that's kind of how that happened for me that's great yes I'm I like, love it I love your name I think it's so creative um and let's say from your family and friends what would they say you are most famous for Oh my God, I have no idea. I actually want to ask my parents that now, but probably just being the weirdo. Like I like I said, nobody in my family is really like, you know, I can't think of anybody in my family that does what I do, or ride motorcycles, like make signs, like make weird stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm probably just like the weird, like weird person in the family. Um, <laughs> Or maybe also just like the most daring, I think. Because really? not a lot of, yeah. You want to say hi to Barba? Aww. He, <laughs> you have a cat. He's also friend. part of the company. <laughs> he's also part of the company. He's Aww. in my videos and pictures, and he's oh always God. around. And what is his name? Um, Barba. Oh. Like <laughs> beard. Mm -hmm. Like beard. Because I don't know if he can, he's got major whiskers. That's funny. <laughs> Um, the, um, yeah, so I think being like the most daring, um, one, because not a lot of people in my family or, or friends take much big risks like I do. Um, part of it, like I said, is it's my faith. And another part is the, my personality of like, let's just see what happens. Right. Right. <laughs> Most of the times things work out. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and like you said, at the end of the day, you know, we have to believe um, in something, you know, other than our own ability sometimes. And we just have to trust that whatever is meant for us is going to happen. And, you know, you're currently, you know, able to live a dream for not having the fear, you know, to hold you back. So congratulations on that. And thank you thank so you. much yeah. for sharing your story with us. I'm sure you will definitely inspire um, some ladies that tune in. Yes, I hope so. Thank you again, and we're going to close out this episode of Wise Wednesdays with a very cool name, Mars Bravo, owner of Signs from Mars. Thank you again. Thank you, Wendy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.